Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Pack one, pick one. What are we working with? A rare. Nice uh, dual land, but it's kind of funny how sometimes gates are even better than the shock lands in certain decks, but uh, we'll definitely play this if we're Gruul, but we're not going to first pick it. We've got some OK Uncommons, Pontiff and Bulrack Clan Crusher are both decent in their respective guilds. Clan Crusher, also a nice splash card in a Simic deck, since it plays so well with the adapt creatures. So you can uh, kind of reset them and adapt again once you remove all the counters. So it can be splashed in uh, Simic or can play lots of adapt creatures in your Gruul deck to play well with it. Looking at the commons, the best ones, Grotesque Demise, pretty close to a Blade Juggler in terms of best black common. Nothing else that really stands out. So this is between Demise, Pontiff and Crusher. I think I would take Demise over Pontiff pack one pick one just as a more flexible card since we'll happily play this in Ragdos and in Orzhov. Yeah, Crusher is a pretty heavy commitment since again, we're not only committing to a two color card or to a card that we're gonna splash, but we're also committing to having enough creatures with plus one plus one counters to synergize with the Crusher. So the chance that we end up with a deck that has all those requirements is not all that high. Whereas all that we need for the mice to be good is be a deck playing black and then the mice is gonna be just fine. So as a first pick, I much prefer the Demise here over Crusher. If Crusher were some sort of insane, very powerful card that goes into any Gruul deck that wins you the game whenever you play it, I will definitely still take it over the single color card. But the payoff, while good, is not insane. So we'd rather just stick to the single color cards that we're more likely to play. And that's still very good. Also just a big fan of black in uh, this format in general, since both Orzov and Rakdos are pretty nice guilds to be in, especially if we can get some blade jugglers. All right, looks like we got rewarded here with the second pick, Judith. Definitely a very powerful card. If we can make a nice low curve aggressive Rakdos deck, Judith is gonna be quite good. Other cards worth talking about in the pack. Judgment, fine removal, but better in a more controlling deck. Uh, Admonition's great. Trumpeter, if we were at Ragdos, would also be fine, but we're never taking it over Judith. Uh, not the biggest fan of the Acrobat, but we'll play it if we need some three mana plays and if we have lots of two drops to enable Spectacle. But yeah, pretty straightforward Judith, hoping to wheel Trumpeter here, basically. Should still keep an eye out on potential Orzhov cards, since while we would like to be Ragdos, we shouldn't commit 100%. So for example, this pack doesn't have any good Rakdos cards. Like 10 Street Dodger could potentially play it, but it's not that exciting. Uh, the Gravel Hide I'm not gonna play outside of Gruul. The Thirsting Shade is also pretty mediocre. And I'm usually not gonna play Rakdos Locket since we wanna have a low land count, low curve, so Lockets are kinda clunky. In most aggressive Rakdos decks, like you can have more controlling Rakdos decks where you try and leverage some of your powerful rares or You've got multiple get to points and then Locket is going to be fine. But in your typical low curve, aggressive, curve out Rakdos deck, there's no real room for the Locket. I can either take the Dodger and stick to the Rakdos plan, since this is probably the card that fits in the deck the most. Or I can speculate on an Oligarch or a Guild Mage in case I give up on Judith and end up in Orzov. Could potentially splash Judith in an Orzov deck as well, since the power level is quite high. And even if you play Judith later in the game, it's still a useful card. So Guild Mage versus Oligarch. This is definitely one of the weaker Guild Mages, but even then, it's still quite good. Giving you a way to break a board stall with a second ability, draining the opponent out, and tapping a big creature can be relevant if you need to hold off something that you can't handle. But Oligarch is definitely a better turn two play since you don't mind trading it off. The 1-1 one -one token is nice and uh, just plays well with all of the ores of synergies. Good at enabling Spectacle too, since you'll likely get to hit with either the token or the oligarch itself. In Guild Mage, more of a late game play that uh, gets better as the game progresses. So it's not even clear between the two which one I would take. Definitely gonna take the Skewer here. Uh, over Trumpeter and Daggercaster, two cards I also wouldn't mind. No great Orzhov cards in this pack. 
I'll take the nice removal spell. The best card in this pack is probably Collision Colossus, but I don't think I want to put a Plummet in my Ragdos deck. If it's the only half I can cast, Rafter Demon, not amazing. I uh, don't think I've ever spectacled this. What else am I taking? There's no great Orzhov card here. Pegasus and Zeal are pretty mediocre. Seems pretty difficult to move into Gruul with the start we had, but maybe I should speculate on Collision anyway. I don't think I'm playing Rafter Demons, so... And I don't think I'm likely playing Azorius Guildgate, since I'm probably going to be trying to splash red at the very least if I do end up in Orzhov. Alright, now I've got some options. Cavalcade can be kind of a thing in some decks. It does take some work to make it good. If we had taken the uh, Tin Street Dodger, that would have been a good combo with it. There's a whole Goblin Gathering theme that we can also try and make work. But uh, overall, not the biggest fan of the card. Vandal is fine. Ignus is an okay 2-drop, but in general, one toughness 2-drops that don't attack into 1-1 one -one tokens or that get ambushed by fairy duelists are um, a bit worse than normal. So I guess I like the Vandal here. Alright, pretty happy with uh, Ragdos Trumpeter. A great enabler for Spectacle on turn 3. And we're still on the Ragdos plan here, despite a few packs with no great cards for us. I doubt I'm playing Thirsting Shade. Best card in the pack overall. Probably one of the blue cards. I've got two good removal spells, I've got a Judith and some good creatures, so I'm pretty happy with where we are in a Rakdos deck, even if this pack is a bit of a miss. So I don't really have a reason to move out of Rakdos, even if this, this pack is not uh, great for us. I'll just take the shade just in case. Alright, Mockery, not exactly what I want, but it is a sign that Rakdos is open, I guess. Um, could take the Gathering in case we get the Cavalcade back. Could take Scavenger sacrifice a bunch of small creatures that don't uh, do much on the board anymore to make a 5-5 five five and scry. Again, not the biggest fan of Locket and Rakdos specifically. The Gathering has a bit of synergy with Judith in that we get to pump tokens, which is nice, but they don't deal damage when they die, since it's non-token. And the best version of Rakdos is usually gonna spectacle something on turn 3 instead of playing a Goblin Gathering, so we want to make sure we have enough 2-drops and then hopefully get some Blade Jugglers on three. I guess I'll take Scavenger for now. Happy with another Trumpeter, so that wheeled out of her second pack where we had the Judith as well. And wheel the Dodger so we didn't miss out on anything by taking the Oligarch, so that's good. Burn Bright in case we somehow get there on the uh, Goblin Gathering, even if that's doubtful. Nothing here. And we even got the Cavalcade back, alright. Does play well with the Ragdos Trumpeters as well, so I should keep it in the main deck for now. Alright. Second pack opened Gates Ablaze, which is powerful for the Gates deck, but we're pretty far from uh, being able to play this. Uh, thrash and Threats. We could cast Thrash for double reds, which, you know, is fine, but not exciting in Ragdos, since our creatures are going to be pretty small. So I think this is a pretty easy skewer to critics. Hope to get Rakdos Guildgate on the wheel. Bladebrand would also be serviceable. Ooh, nice. Rakdos Firewheelers, excellent. Uh, also wouldn't mind Drill Bits if we're aggressive enough. Carrion Imp is a fine 4-drop. Scorchmark can be playable. But uh, easy Firewheeler. Rick's Mighty Raveler is amazing. Good on turn 2, great if we can spectacle it for 4 mana. Um, again, hoping for the Ragdos guild gate to wheel, but uh, yeah, Ragdos seems open. And get the point seems great. Nice uh, removal spell to top off our curve, get rid of big things. Alright, this is an interesting pick. Grudian versus Acrobat. Acrobats can be very powerful if you're like on the play, they don't block your 2-drop, you get to spectacle this and maybe kill the blocker they play for the Acrobat, hit for 5. And we do have double skewer and a grotesque demise, so we do have some removal to clear a path for the Acrobat to connect. So I don't hate uh, the Acrobat over Grudian here, 
Like, both Acrobat and Agrudin can be fine against Gruul, since this is just a 5 power blocker if you wanted to. And then this has Death Touch, so they both can be decent blockers against uh, bigger green creatures. I think I'm gonna try the Acrobat. Pretty happy with another Trumpeter. Just a great spectacle enabler at 3 mana, if we can play this on turn 2. Usually goes unblocked, and then we get to uh, play something like a 1 mana Skewer the Critics, get to Spectacle Reveler, we get to Spectacle the Acrobat, so... Ooh, interesting decision. Carnival Carnage, excellent. Whenever we get to kill a one toughness creature, good if we can uh, play Carnage later in the game. Inheritance can also be a nice way to enable Spectacle turn after turn and eventually close out the game if there's a board stall. But we do already have some mana sinks with Triple Trumpeter. We've got Reveler to refuel. So I don't know how much we need to lean on Inheritance. So I kind of dig the Carnival Carnage here. And all right, some options here too. Lots of playable cards. I'm not the biggest fan of Spears Pure since it's kind of bad when you're behind and you're not always going to be the aggressor in every game. But it is a good way to enable Spectacle. Uh, Spire Mangler is a pretty weird card. Can basically pump itself if you play it and be a 4 1 creature with flash and flying, so it can ambush opposing flyers or other creatures in general. It can also be used to pump other flyers, although we don't have many flyers at the moment. And then just a 2 1 flyer afterwards that can maybe get in some damage. But the Footlight Fiend is also a great way to enable Spectacle. And uh, we don't have many 1 drops. Like, I might play the Dodger, I'm probably not playing the Thirsting Shade. So having a few additional one drops to enable spectacle a later is nice. And then the Carrion Imp is also a card I would definitely consider playing in a Rakdos deck as a way to get him a bit of evasive damage in. Uh, exiling a creature is pretty relevant against the uh, Orzhov decks that want to get creatures back from the graveyard. But for now I think Footlight Fiend is more important. So the Rakdos Guildgate wield. As much as I like Bladebrand, Bladebrand does also play well with Footlight Fiend. Getting to fix her mana is pretty important here, I think. Especially with uh, Ragdos Firewheeler in the deck. I don't think we're going to struggle to get enough playables. I already have 18 and we're not even done with the second pack. As much as uh, Bladebrand would be good, I think just making sure we can cast our spells is even better. And now we've got a close pick between Drillbit and Carrion Imp. So let's cut all the cards I'm not too excited about. Cavalcades, I'm still unsure. Doesn't look great. It's also a bit of a nombo with Judith. Don't think I'm cavalcading unless I open some weird cards in the last pack. Carnival Carnage. Pretty flexible, can play it for one, can play it for four. We've got some good removal. This is probably going to get cast on turn 3 most of the time. It's got a reasonable curve. So we don't have much going on at 4. Don't have many flyers yet, so I don't hate Carrion Imp. Drill Bit gives us a bit of disruption, which can also be nice. Take away a key removal spell or key blocker. Uh, although, of course, it is a pretty poor top deck later in the game. But I do need to make sure I end up with enough uh, creatures at the end of the day. Also want to make sure we have a lot of creatures with Judith. I guess I'll try to Drill Bit. And now we can take the Blade Brands. Pretty good with uh, Footlight Fiend especially. Uh, don't think I'm playing a second Scavenger, don't think I'm playing Viscopa Vampire, but... Alright, so going into the last pack, what do I need? A couple more twos and then mostly just Blade Jugglers. If I can just open Blade Juggler after Blade Juggler, I'll be happy. We even got the Inheritance last pick. Might actually uh, play that one. What about a Theater of Horrors? That's uh, one of the better cards we could have hoped for. This just provides a ton of card advantage over the course of a game. So if we don't kill them with the aggro plan, we can just grind them out with Theater. Also it turns into a mana sink where we can ping the opponent to death. So that seems good. Can hope to wheel Plague White, can hope to wheel Dead Revels, can hope to wheel Ragdos Guildgate. Even a Racketeers would maybe make the deck. But yeah, easy Theater. Alright, second pack a bit less exciting. 
I wish we could have taken one of the cards out of our first pack here too. So we're looking at a Grudian and a Spire Mangler basically. Don't think I'm act of treasoning. Uh, Spire Mangler's fine, don't mind having a bit of evasion. And probably taking Trumpeter over a second drill bit. Don't want to have infinite drill bits, just need to make sure we can enable Spectacle often enough. Although having too many Trumpeters can also be awkward since we can't really spend mana pumping all of them. Don't know if I'm playing the Spear Spear, but there's nothing else here. Alright, so we had a very good first pick, but these next couple packs haven't been great. Bankrupt, I don't think, makes the cuts. So probably just take the Maka, but I doubt I'm playing it. Alright, another Footlight Fiend could make the cuts, plays well with Blade Brands. Alright, happy with the Dead Revels, definitely playing that one. Uh, I doubt I'm playing Consigned to the Pits, but I'll take it just in case. And I did wield the Plague White and the Dead Revels. Probably leaning Plague White here just to diversify the two drops a bit and just make sure we have enough of them. So sadly did not see a single Blade Juggler. I think this is the second draft in a row where I don't see a single one, sadly. But so be it, still have some other good tools. So at the end of the day, pretty light on spectacle cards in general, but still have enough uh, three mana plays to have a functional deck. So take the Plague Whites. Nothing here that I'm gonna play. It used to be that Blade Jugglers wield every time, maybe they adjusted the bots a bit. Alright, so we ended up with a pretty decent uh, Rakdos deck. So how do we want to adjust the deck? This might be a 16 lander, our curve is relatively low, and a lot of our expensive cards have Spectacle. Uh, Spear Spear, one of our weaker cards. Scavenger is also cuttable, although it does give us something beefy, and sacrificing a Footlight Fiend and getting stuff back with Dead Revels is pretty nice. And Drill Bit is also one of our weaker cards. The problem with uh, the Dodger is that if you spend mana making it unblockable, then you're kind of paying the mana that you get discounted from a spectacle in the first place. Like if I want to play an Acrobat on 3, and I spend mana pumping Dodger, then I can no longer spectacle the Acrobat on 3. So Dodger is also one of our weaker cards here, but it is a way to potentially get an evasive damage later in the game. Need to make two cuts, and there's four cards on the cutting block here. And looks like people like Drillbit and Dodger Cut the Spear Spewer and cut the Scavenger. Seems okay to me. And then the mana distribution. A little bit more black perhaps. Most of the non-creature spells are black, have lots of Trumpeters at two and Plague Whites that are all black. So we can potentially afford to miss red mana for a turn or two, but we really need black mana on turn two, so eight, seven plus a Guildgate seems fine. Showtime. All right, so... Playing Judith is reasonable. You could make a point that I should keep Trumpeter back, so I don't get to let the opponent spectacle here. And instead should have played Spire Mangler first. But I also get to hit my opponent for a bunch. Alright, there are three colors. 
I actually don't hate Spiremangler, block Maka, and then kill Gutterbones. Nice, cure my Judith, so now the Dead Revels is looking good. So attack, Dead Revels for two, and then probably just go Trumpeter plus Footlight Fiend, next turn play Judith. All right, that'll do it. All right, um, on the play, missing black mana. Do get to Dodger turn one, and a third land gives me Vandal, which can help me find black mana. Overall, it's kind of weak. I think I can do better. Yeah, this is better. Bottom of lands. Guildgate on one. And um, we'll see what we can do with the, the Reveler. Might be the play to play it now, discarding lands, and then later maybe get it back with Dead Revels, at which point I'll spectacle it. Since spectacling this with the Dead Revels in hand is awkward, since I'm going to have to discard it. So I'm kind of digging Reveler, discard lands, and hope to draw into a 3-mana play. Alright, that works too. Judgments. Right, so now it's in the graveyard for my dead Revels. And an Inheritance can be pretty effective in some uh, games. Soul attack. You gotta be wary of uh, counter spells here. So I don't know if I want to run out the inheritance into three open mana. Might be better off pumping the trumpeter. Could also carnage them, which I guess is fine too. It's not like super effective at this stage in the game but they might still want to counter it if they get the chance. Ooh, <laughs> interesting. So I guess they're missing a color. Hello. Got the combo here, Theater plus Inheritance. It's pretty strong. Don't think I'm getting back Reveler, although... I guess getting back Reveler is not bad, since I get to just draw three cards next turn. Don't need to be too greedy. Alright, there's a black mana. And our opponent explodes. <laughs> Yeah, Inheritance plus Theater is pretty dirty. On the draw, no black mana. Pretty far from playing a Fire Wheeler, that's double black. But I do have a Vandal to potentially help. I don't know, I don't think I can keep a hand where I don't do anything for the first two turns. This hand needs some help, but I've got Reveler to draw a card, and I just need any land to Spectacle Acrobat on three. Now what to bottom is a question. So probably gonna keep Fiend and Reveler. 
it makes sense to keep Acrobat since with a mountain I get to play turn 3. So that leaves Judith and Inheritance. I've got to figure Judith is going to be pretty good with all these early creatures. So Inheritance could be the bottom, but there's definitely games where Inheritance wins where creatures don't get there. So that was a close call. If I had a Plague White in my opener, I would have bottomed that one. But now I can discard it with the uh, Reveler. I gotta figure Trumpeter's gonna be better. We don't have any mana sinks, so... I think I'm discarding Plague Whites and keep Trumpeter. Alright, perfect, so... Next turn can decide between Judith and Acrobats. Demise is also decent. Could just attack with Footlight Fiends and then play Acrobat and then next turn Demise the Vampire so Acrobat can maybe connect. But I guess if they trade for Raveler then Acrobat's also more likely to connect. But I guess now they could just take it and then attack me back for 3. But then I get to hit them pretty hard with Acrobat too. Not sure about this one. Yeah, if possible I want to keep Demise for afterlife creatures indeed. The problem with attacking with both is that they can just take it and attack me back and gain 3. Which seems bad. But now they can potentially block the acrobats with the vampire. So we'll see. Stalwarts. Sure. Yeah, that's a deal. So with the land I get to play both next turn. Pontiff keep up 3 mana, it's a little suspicious. Don't really want to attack with Acrobat at the moment. So I guess Hasty Vandal, Discard Trumpeter could be a thing. Pump spell. Fair enough. It's unclear whether I should play the land. I guess I should get punished by um, the bell haunts, but that's about it. Yep. That's uh, unfortunate. Had to figure that if they had bell haunt, they would have played it last turn, though. Yeah, we're not in a great spot. Bottom the inheritance, so. Theater is kind of our last good grindy card, and I guess uh, Dead Revels would be good too. Trumpeter gives us a reasonable mana sink at least, but opponent's got three cards in hand. They're gonna start spamming Grasping Thralls now, so it's not looking good. Alright, so if they don't have any more action, can maybe hope to top deck out of it. Well, that's definitely action. So, take six. So, Trumper attacks, and I get to pump. This game's pretty much over. Take 8, down to 4, next turn this kills me. I 
Ah, jeez. Could pump twice and deal five damage, but we're dead on the way back. Even with the Judith, we probably would have struggled to win that game. All right, still not having too much luck in our opening hands. Would have loved to have an extra guild gate in there. On the draw, need a third land to play Vandal and specifically black mana to play Trumpeter. Mm, not really liking those odds. All right, I guess I'll keep hoping that the Reveler can help me out. And then Reveler discarding a creature is kind of nice with the dead Revels. Probably don't want to get rid of Skewer, so could get rid of the Fire Wheeler since I'm furthest away from casting it, although it is probably the most impactful creature. So it's either that or probably the Spire Mangler. And yeah, spot on the Spire Mangler, be a bit greedy. Can always uh, discard the Fire Wheeler to the Reveler here, and then later get it back as soon as we get a second Swamp. Now I'm probably just discarding a land. Here we gotta be mindful of fairy duelists for the most part, that would be pretty bad. And we wanna preserve our spectacle enabler, so I think I just take two and then probably secure the critics the hybrid next turn. All right, I guess I'll secure the Aramonculus instead. And then I can hope to find black mana for Firewheeler to kill the hybrid instead of having to try and block. Oh, nice. That's what we needed. So the decision of keeping the Fire Wheeler paid off. Another hybrid, Carnival Carnage, looking decent too. So don't mind attacking with both. Play Inheritance for now. And then Carnage as a burn spell is also going to get them pretty low here. And our opponent packs it in. All right. Well, we seem to be eternally stuck on rank 9 here, no matter if we win or lose. Well, we've got a Keeper. Hopefully pick up uh, another Swamp at some point. Immolation Shaman could be effective if we pump Trumpeters. Did pick up the Swamp, so Fire Wheeler's looking good, although opponent doesn't have any creatures that die to the Fire Wheeler's ability. Don't have any great attack, so I can hard cast a drill bit, I can play another Trumpeter, I can play Judith and then attack. It would result in a trade if they double block and I get to kill the runner. What is there that I want to drill bit on turn 4? It's mostly the 5 mana plays that I want to drill bit. I think I'm gonna just drill bit now. The idea being that next turn I want to go Fire Wheeler plus attack, or attack and then Fire Wheeler. I'll probably take the Skewer. Those two spells could be annoying if they keep up mana here. Because that means I can't use Fire Wheeler to finish off one of their creatures. But the Titanic Brawl on Judith, for example, would still result in one of their creatures dying, so... I 
wouldn't mind seeing Titanic Brawl before damage, but then I guess they can still Stony Strength to save the runner from Firewheeler. So I could also pump, and that would also force the Stony, but I would rather develop my board, I think. And that's still gonna force the Stony. And now we've got kind of a stalemate. Ooh, Acrobats. Would our opponent trade if we attacked here? If they don't, then going Trumpeter plus Acrobat is pretty decent. Yeah, let's attack. Alright, let's see what uh, leftovers they have. What are we hoping to draw? Basically, removal spell for this Immolation Shaman would go a long way. Two Skewers and a uh, Grotesque Demise. Get the points. Otherwise, something like a Dead Revels could be good. Is Immolation Shaman good? Eh, it's medium. I wouldn't take it very highly, but it's doing some work here as a mana sink. It's kind of like a worse version of Trumpeter in a weird way. Runner attacks. With Judith coming up, we're less incentivized to trade off now. This can become six toughness. So the Firewheeler with Judith in play can still trade off for the Immolation Shaman. Because they might just be planning to pump Shaman on defense, in which case Judith means I can still get in a big chunk of damage. I think I take four. Yeah, it looks like they have another play lined up. Gravel Hides. But we did draw the get the points. So Gravel Hides annoying since that blocks my Acrobats. Now I could get the point to Gravel Hides. And potentially taking 8 on the way back. So is that reasonable? Get the point to Gravel Hide, attack with everyone. Opponent probably takes it. So they take 10 down to 4. Yeah, I mean, we're not dead on the way back. So I think that's a play. I could leave the Trumpeter back in case of a pump spell. Ooh, Dead Revels. Alright, now I'm definitely more in favor of keeping Trumpeter back since we've got some nice late game coming up. So right now I have another Trumpeter in the graveyard too. Hopefully they just don't attack me, I get to attack, trade and dead revels. So the Shaman's ability means one damage whenever we activate Trumpeter. Important to keep in mind as well. It does attack with a runner. I think I'm taking it. Alright, Mammoth Spider. So Judith means I still get to Attack past the spider here. So these are both must blocks. And then the trumpeter gets in for two, puts them to three. And I have Judith back to block the runner. Seems okay. Lands, and we got there. All right, sweet. So we found a get the point to clear a path, get a nice big attack in, and then dead revels as well. All right, not bad, four and one. Let's keep it up. Fine opening hands. Uh, we'll need to draw a couple lands with inheritance and get the point, but most of our deck is cheap stuff. We can cycle blade brand. 
Yeah, so our late game's looking good. Just need to make sure we can get to it. So I don't hate Plague White trade for Boar. Of course the Trumpeter can block it if they don't pump and be okay. Not really enabling Spectacle next turn for anything. And given the Dead Revels I actively want to trade. And then Bladebrand can trade for another big creature later. Sure. I do have the Footlight Fiend, so that could do some dirty things with the Blade Brands. But for now, I'll just uh, tap out and then try and set up the Blade Brand next turn, maybe, if they play a second creature. Well, if they have nothing, then that's good too. Then I'm just gonna inheritance them. In which case I feel okay trading one damage for two damage essentially. Yeah, probably better to play Trumpeter over Pumping. Suppose I could also consider just trading the Footlight Fiend and then Dead Ravelsing back Plague White and Fiend. Just feel like I want to set up this Blade Brand play. Is this a fight spell? Thrash. Or well, I could have given it Death Touch and then it would have killed the boar. But it didn't really seem worth it. Since the boar's not really doing much. Attack with both, Dead Revels, replay Plague White. That's a pretty good draw. Alright, well, that was unfortunate. Hey, we leveled up all the way to number 6. Quite the jump. Alright, um, yeah, I mean, I think I'm keeping. Can cycle Blade Brands, Cure, with Spectacle perhaps, and Drill Bit, so yeah. Alright, Gruul, lots of beefy creatures, and a Wayfinder at 2. So the Wayfinder I can potentially kill with the Firewheeler, or I can kill with the Skewer. All the other things are kind of a problem. I guess the Ceratoc is the first problem, so I probably want to take that to throw off their curve a bit. And then Smash is not going to happen if we can keep them off having creatures. So depending on my draw step, if I draw a mountain then I'll save the skewer for later so I can firewheeler the wayfinder I think. If not I might skewer the wayfinder anyway, we'll see. Can always make the dodge run blockable too. 
Uh, it keeps Vandal on top. So I know I'll have a target for the Fire Wheeler at some point. So how likely are they to block my Dodger here? Yeah, I guess I'm fine with the trade. Now I think I skewered the Wayfinder. And play Trumpeter. And then they don't really have a great attack with the... Vandal, so it's gonna be a 3-2. And this lined up uh, perfectly. Probably just pump the Trumpeter over, play Footlight Fiends. Opponents at 5, so taking Ceratok threw off their curve here, they didn't have any play. So the discard spell doing some work. And now we can basically close out the game with evasive damage from Trumpeter and Dodger. Bladebrand plus Footlight Fiend could also do some dirty things. And Bladebrand by itself can just kill whatever blocker they play. So we've got some options. If I attack with a Fire Wheeler, I imagine they block that one. I only get in 2 damage. But if I don't kill the Rent Horn, they could also Savage Smash. So how about I just make Dodger unblockable, and then Flash and Spire Mangler end of turn, get in for 2. And then I have multiple ways to win. Between the Spire Mangler, the Dodger, the Trumpeter. So from their perspective, they know something's up. Otherwise, we would have just pumped the Trumpeter to get in one more damage. They will Savage Smash. Now I could Blade Brand to trade, and that would also be fine. It might be better than flashing in the Spire Mangler. All right, sweet. Number five. All right, final boss. Things went pretty quickly. And we've got a decent opener. Soroform hybrids. So I could just attack Spire Mangler and then keep the mice for later. Could have a quench. Just gonna play inheritance here. Could be a pump spell. Biomancy, bounce, and pump. So if I demise, I don't get to fizzle the pump spell here or uh, the bounce spell since it has two different targets. I think I prefer getting inheritance in play over replaying trumpeter. More mana efficient. Alright, Creeper we can't demise, but Theater's a nice pickup. So I don't quite need to demise the hybrids since they are still two lands away from adapting. Just playing Theater seems okay. 
And then the question is what to do with a Spire Mangler. Do I keep it back to try and block? Play more controlling game? Or do I try and apply pressure? I think with a Theater plus Inheritance combo I should try and play it more slowly. Since I'm likely winning the long game with this engine. Alright. Happy I stayed back. Yeah, those are some nice pickups. So I'll start by playing Lance. So the problem with not killing the hybrid now is that they could potentially adapt it next turn, at which point I can no longer demise it. So I think I should go Trumpeter plus demise the hybrid and then keep get the point for the Renthorn for next turn. Now I could keep the demise at instant speed. So if they go and adapt, I can demise in response and make them waste mana. Could potentially be risky. But technically, Trumpeter blocks the hybrids, so I think that's okay. And then if they adapt, I can demise. All right, it looks like it's not going to be too relevant here. Titanic Brawl, sure. Another one. All right, a land would not be bad, so I can kill both. Bunch of trumpeters instead. So I think I'm gonna make kind of the same decision as last time. I'm just gonna kill the hybrid while I can instead of risking um, having it adapt and play a bunch of trumpeters. Drawing two cards per turn, draining the opponent for one per turn. Sooner or later we'll get there. Now do I take four? I think four is still a relatively safe when we're at eleven. Didn't think I want to chump. Clear the mind, sure. Don't mind if I do. It's pretty good. Let's have a look at what you're working with. Prying Eyes, Wrecking Beast, Slinger. So this is never getting cast in time. Um, prying Eyes doesn't matter, so I guess I'll take Slinger, the only card that matters. I'm just gonna make sure I kill them before they get to 7 mana. Which should not be an issue. Now do I pump with the Trumpeter or do I get the points? So I'm hitting them for 2 down to 8 if I get the points. Put them to 7, 6, 5, and this is one short of lethal. Get the point is safer in a way. I think I should just pump since then I can kill them next turn. If I pump now I get to hit them for uh, 4, put them to 6 and then next turn sack inheritance as lethal. I guess I'm dead to another Renthorn, I didn't consider that. So maybe I should have... Yeah, maybe that was bad. Dying to another Renthorn seems a bit sketchy. So yeah, I probably should have played it differently. Oh well. Alright, well, 7-1. Pretty straightforward uh, draft run. Ranked up a little bit. Alright, sweet. That was fun. Got to live the dream of assembling theater plus inheritance uh, a few times. And uh, as another reminder, on uh, Tuesday we're doing the early access event, courtesy of Wizards of the Coast. Thanks for the invite once again. Yeah, we'll be doing the early access event, which starts 
at uh, 8 a.m. Pacific time on Tuesday, the 24th, and uh, we'll go for about 22 hours. I'll try to do the entire thing, start to finish, and we'll be exploring the new standard with Throne of Eldraine, and we'll try and do a few seals and drafts as well in between. So it's going to be super exciting, and then hopefully you can tune in at least for part of it. But uh, with that, I think I'm going to leave you in this uh, booster menu. But I want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.